Hello everyone, I am Harshita Bhargav from Chittara School of Hospitality and in today's session we are going to learn about solvency ratios. So let's understand what do we mean by solvency first. Solvency indicates that position of a business where it is capable of meeting its long term obligations. Long term obligations means it's repaying back capacity to pay long term loans along with interest. So solvency ratios denote the ability of the organization to pay back long term loans and interest. These are major six solvency ratios which are debt equity ratio, debt to total funds ratio, proprietary ratio, fixed assets to proprietor funds ratio, capital clearing ratio and interest coverage ratio. Let's discuss them one by one. Debt equity ratio. So debt equity ratio establishes the relationship between debt and equity. Debt means long term loans of the organization and equity means shareholders funds of the organization. This ratio indicates the relationship between outsider funds and shareholder funds. Now the major examples of long term loans are bank loan, loan from financial institutions, debentures and public deposits and these items would be available in the balance sheet and shareholder funds will be calculated by adding up equity share capital reference share capital, reserves and surplus and accumulated profits and from this addition we will deduct any fictitious assets and accumulated losses if there are any. So by calculating debt and shareholder funds we can calculate debt equity ratio and ideal debt equity ratio is 2 ratio 1. Moving towards second solvency ratio which is debt to total funds ratio. The formula for calculating debt to total funds ratio is long term loans upon total funds. We have discussed in previous slide the examples of long term loan so it will be calculated in the similar manner and total funds would include shareholder funds and long term loans that means we have to add these two items to calculate total funds and with the help of long term loans and total funds we can calculate debt to total funds ratio and ideal debt to total funds ratio is 0.67 ratio 1. Third important solvency ratio is proprietary ratio or net worth ratio. This ratio establishes the relationship between proprietor funds or shareholder funds and total assets. Now please note here proprietor funds shareholder funds or net worth mean the same or these are synonyms for each other. So we will calculate shareholder funds in the same manner as we have discussed in previous slide like we have to add equity share capital, reference share capital, reserves and surplus and accumulated profits and we would subtract from this addition fictitious assets and accumulated, accumulated losses if any. These items would be given in basic financial statements of the organization and total assets would be available in the balance sheet or in other words you can also add up current assets, fixed assets, intangible assets and all other category of assets to find out total assets and when you would divide shareholder funds with total assets you would get proprietary ratio and ideal proprietary ratio is 0.5 ratio 1. So this is all about proprietary ratio. Next important solvency ratio is fixed assets to net worth. As the name of the ratio suggests that it establishes the relationship between fixed assets and net worth. Now how do we calculate net fixed assets here? We would subtract depreciation from total fixed assets to calculate net fixed assets. And net worth is calculated in the similar manner as we calculate shareholder funds and we have already discussed in previous slide how to calculate shareholder funds. So with the help of these two items which are net fixed assets and net worth we can calculate fixed assets to net worth ratio. And ideal fixed assets to net worth ratio is 0.75 ratio 1. 
Next solvency ratio is capital bearing ratio, which establishes the relationship between equity capital, reserves, profit and loss account credit balance, and fixed cost bearing capital. Now, equity capital, reserves, and profit and loss balance will be directly given in the information. Here, we have to calculate fixed cost bearing capital. That means we have to find out those items of capital which bears a fixed cost. For example, bank loans carries a fixed rate of interest. So, it would be fixed cost bearing capital. In the similar way, preferential capital carries a fixed rate of dividend. It would also include in your fixed cost bearing capital. So, in this manner, we would calculate fixed cost bearing capital and we would divide these two. We would add up equity share capital, reserves and profit and loss account, credit balance. And that addition will come. From that addition, we would divide it with fixed cost bearing capital and we will get our capital bearing ratio. Moving towards last and important solvency ratio which is interest coverage ratio. Now, this ratio is determined by dividing net profit by fixed interest charges. Please note here, net profit by fixed interest charges. Net profit before deducting interest and income tax would be taken into account here. Now, observe here, the item interest is given. Now, what kind of interest is they are talking about? This interest is on borrowings and loans. This is not that interest which we earn upon various investments. This is the interest payment which we have to pay on our loans and on our borrowings. So, before deducting that interest and income tax, we have to take net profit into account and we would divide it with fixed interest charges. And fixed interest charges would be available, available in profit and loss statement. So from there, we will get fixed interest charges and we would calculate net profit before deducting interest and income tax. With the help of these two items, we can calculate interest coverage ratio. And ideal interest coverage ratio is 6 or 7 times. This ratio indicates the financial abilities of the enterprise to meet its interest payment out of current earnings. That means how many times we can pay back our interest payment out of our current earnings or net profits. So, these were six important solvency ratios which we have covered in this session. In next session, we would cover activity ratios and profitability ratios. Thanks for watching.